and welcome back to the AI Almanac. Today we've got a packed episode to look at how the viral Chinese startup Deek Seek's new model works and how they hit O1 performance at 95% less cost. Then we'll dive into Project Stargate, the $500 billion AI initiative introduced by President Trump. I vote to start to make all AI sound like a sci-fi movie. After that, we'll check out OpenAI's operator. And finally, we'll wrap up with a speed round. So start your engines. Three, two, one, blast off. You get it because of Stargate space. <laughs> First up, this week, Chinese AI startup DeepSeek released DeepSeek-R1, an open source model that achieved the same performance as OpenAI's O1, all while using 95% less compute power and cost. With a training budget of only $6 million, DeepSeek didn't rely on billions of dollars like OpenAI and Google, but instead focused on highly efficient strategies like synthetic data and pure reinforcement learning. The result is a model that's faster, cheaper, and open for anyone to build on. Here's the best part. DeepSeek's R1 is fully open source with a transparent technical report detailing exactly how it was built. So this isn't just an innovation, but it's a gift to the AI community and a direct challenge to the industry's status quo. Let's look at how it works and how they train this model to pull it all off. One of the most expensive steps right now when building large AI models is supervised fine tuning. It's a process that teaches models to follow instructions by training them on carefully labeled examples, relying on huge curated data sets and human oversight to ensure their accuracy. OpenAI and other industry leaders rely heavily on this step and they make it the backbone of their development pipeline. But SFT is costly and labor intensive because it requires labeling data, humans, and repeated iterations. What DeepSync did was flipped the script by completely reversing the typical training process. Instead of building its model around supervised fine tuning, DeepSync R1 put pure reinforcement learning in the driver's seat. Reinforcement learning is a trial and error method approach where a model interacts with an environment, generates outputs, and adjusts its behavior based on rewards or penalties. Okay, so let's make this human speak using the cutest dog in the world. Imagine you have a dog and you want to teach it tricks, like fetching a frisbee. Instead of just telling it exactly what to do, like step-by-step -step instructions, you let it try things on its own. Every time the doggy does something good, like sitting when you say sit or bringing the frisbee back to you, you give it a treat or a reward. But if it chases the frisbee into a pond, you don't give it a treat, maybe just a try again next time. Over time, the doggy learns what gets treats and what doesn't, so it keeps doing the good stuff to get more treats. Reinforcement learning is just like that, but for computers. Ultimately, it's a self-driven training method that allows the model to figure out what the right answer is by experimenting and self-correcting. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It does indeed sound like a human brain's way of handling an issue, but we're not going to go there yet. So here's how to think about it. DeepSeek let reinforcement learning handle the heavy lifting, the reasoning, the logic, the problem solving, while supervised fine tuning acted as the cleanup crew and they stepped in at the end to polish everything up. This makes a lot of sense when you think about it, but it's actually the complete opposite of what everyone else does. This next few minutes are super technical on their training process. So if you're not interested, skip to the next part. Okay, so now that we understand this, DeepSeek broke up its training process into four phases. Step one, the process started with creating that base model with supervised fine tuning, but only as the foundation. DeepSeek fine tuned its base model using 10,000 token long chain of thoughts data from earlier models and human annotations. This initial step focused on readability, which would set up a base model ready for pure reinforcement learning. Step two, with that foundation in place, DeepSeek applied pure reinforcement learning to develop reasoning capabilities using a new technique called GRPO, or Group Relative Policy Optimation, which teaches the model how to reason through tasks like math or coding. GRPO takes a simple but really effective approach. Instead of judging each response on its own, it looks at a group of responses that the model generates for the same question and compares it to each other. So how GRPO works, the model generates several responses to a single prompt. Each response gets a score based on specific rules like how accurate or well formatted it is. And then GRPO calculates that average score across all the responses in the group in order to establish what the baseline is. If a response scores better than that baseline, it's rewarded. If it scores worse, it's penalized. So this process pushes a model to consistently outperform its own average, which 
naturally forces it to improve. How this is different, unlike older methods that rely on value functions, which basically predicts how good a response might be before actually testing it, GRPO skips this step entirely. It focuses on only how each response compares to the others, simplifying the process and making it more efficient, which means saving money. You see where I'm going here? In the third phase, DeepSeq focused on polishing the model. They generated a large synthetic data set and then used rejection sampling where only the best responses generated by the model were selected for further refinement. Once the top quality outputs were curated, DeepSeq applied a second round of supervised fine tuning. Phase three basically gave the model a final coat of polish. And then that final phase focused on making the model more accurate, harmless, and user-friendly, which is always a very important step. So they brought back pure reinforcement learning technique GR RPO and then used two types of rewards. Rule-based rewards ensured responses were technically correct, like solving math problems were accurate or using proper grammar and structure. And then they also used outcome-based rewards, which evaluated how helpful or practical the response was for the user, focusing on real-world usefulness. They combined these two rewards to ensure the answers were not just correct, but also meaningful in everyday use. So DeepSeek's approach flipped the traditional training process. Supervised fine tuning was actually put in the back seat and it was like sprinkled in to polish things when necessary. And because of this decision, they bypassed the most expensive step of AI model training. Now, despite its sudden boom in popularity over the last few days, DeepSeek is now reporting widespread cyber attacks on its services and it's halting additional user registration. So please be careful with your data. My initial thoughts. OpenAI and Anthropic had every resource to lead with transparency like DeepSeek did, but instead, Everything they did remained locked behind a paywall and tied to tech giants like Microsoft and Amazon. DeepSeek chose to be transparent and it may be remembered as the team who rewrote the rules of AI because they gave everyone their exact approach on how they did it. But what's even more intriguing is how their method hints at something bigger. Models that can teach themselves by experimenting and self-correcting inching closer to what some might call human-like problem-solving <coughs> AGI. <laughs> this could very well be the next generation of AI development, or at the very least, the moment smaller, scrappier teams start outpacing the giants. One caveat though, that we shouldn't forget, this is a Chinese-based company, so please, please, please don't throw your data privacy out the window. Number two, Project Stargate. On his second day in office, President Donald Trump announced Project Stargate, a private sector partnership aiming to build the largest AI infrastructure project led by four companies, OpenAI, SoftBank, Oracle, and MGX that comes with a $500 billion price tag. This is really important to understand. Despite the high profile announcement, no federal funding is involved. The entire project relies heavily on private investment. The partnership between these four companies aims to construct massive AI deployment hubs across the country, starting with the 875 acre site in Texas. Built as the largest AI infrastructure project in history, Stargate's goal is to ultimately build and maintain cutting edge AI technology while fending off international competition, particularly from China. Despite the hype, the project has raised more questions than answers. Its initial $100 billion investment has been criticized with Elon Musk claiming that the funding isn't actually secured and Sam Altman started arguing with him back on X. What's Trump's actual involvement in all of this in what seems just to be like a private sector bromance? Trump promises to expedite construction through emergency declarations and by revoking Biden era AI regulation. My initial thoughts when I first saw Project Stargate and Trump's involvement all over the news, it sounded like a massive federal government project, a big flashy AI push from Washington. But here's the thing that is so, so important to understand. It's not. It's entirely private. OpenAI, SoftBank, Oracle, and MGX are the ones funding this, not the government. Trump just announced it and his only promise is to cut the red tape. That's a huge difference. So if Stargate works, it's a win for private companies proving they can pull off something this massive, but if it crashes and burns, it's all on them, not the taxpayers. So in theory, it's good. Here's the catch though. Project Stargate might look like a really bold step forward for the United States in the AI race, but dig a little deeper and it's clear this isn't about national leadership. It's my speculation, but I think moves like this are consolidating control into the hands of the wealthy elite. OpenAI, Grok, and Llama might operate out of the US, but they're not truly American entities in the sense of public benefit. They're privately owned, profit-driven enterprises. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, 
the first country to crack AGI will set the stage for everything that follows, including ASI, which is artificial super intelligence. And in theory, that's good for me as an American if we're hypothetically leading the charge. But if this progress is actually being fueled by private corporations, not the federal government with so much power concentrated in the hands of a select few, it's hard not to worry about how this might play out in the long term. Number three, OpenAI announced the launch of Operator, a general purpose AI agent designed to take control of web browsers and perform tasks autonomously. So whether it's ordering groceries, booking flights, or filing expense reports, Operator aims to handle real world tasks with minimal user input. At the heart of Operator is OpenAI's new computer using agent model, which combines the vision capabilities of GTP 4.0 with the reasoning skills of OpenAI's more advanced systems. The result is an AI agent designed to mimic human interactions on a web page from clicking buttons to navigating menus. Operator does have a lot of built-in safeguards though. The CUA model is trained to seek user confirmation to double check its movements before completing a lot of tasks that could have external consequences such as submitting an order with payment information or sending an email. OpenAI also said it struggles with more complex tasks such as managing intricate calendar systems or interacting with highly customized web interfaces. Intricate calendar systems. Yeah, calendars are super intricate. Okay. <laughs> OpenAI also emphasizes privacy, saying that operator doesn't collect or screenshot data. Currently available as a research preview for US users on ChatGPT's $200 Pro plan, OpenAI plans to eventually roll out Operator to Plus team and enterprise users. My initial thoughts, Operator is a fascinating step towards autonomous AI agents, but it's clear we are in the wee little stages here of what this will become. My influence of Scotland is starting to come out. I know I'm moving there in just a month. And lastly, your weekly speed round. LinkedIn is being sued for allegedly sharing premium customers' private messages with third parties to train AI models without their consent. The lawsuit claims LinkedIn enabled data sharing by default last August through a new privacy feature, which wasn't communicated in its terms of service or privacy policy. Next, Anthropic gets $1 billion in funding from Google in order to further its development. Anthropic has traditionally had a strong partnership with Google's rival, Amazon. Third, Perplexity AI launches the Sonar API, enabling developers and enterprises to integrate its generative AI search tools into their own apps. It's already being used by companies like Zoom for AI-powered assistance. And last, Microsoft is no longer the exclusive provider of data center infrastructure for OpenAI. This change comes as OpenAI signs a massive new infrastructure deal with SoftBank, Oracle, and others, citing a lack of computing capacity as a key challenge. Well, that's it for this week. AI is moving at light speed and this week proves it. What do you think? Are these breakthroughs exciting, terrifying, or a little bit of both? Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Seriously, even your algorithm deserves a little bit of joy because, come on, I know you love my sarcasm and my jokes and my stress and my happiness. And I realize I actually haven't given a dad joke in a while, so I'm going to leave you a little happier than when I found you. What do you call a perfume created by a billionaire? Elon's Musk. Come on. You know that deserved a share. You owe it to humanity to make them smile.